This is Pat's Two Cents, reminding you that God's into love. Okay, here we go. I'm going to read two verses. Isaiah 53, 3 and Philippians 3.10. He is despised and rejected of men. Hmm, that sound familiar? A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we did, excuse me, we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Now go down to Philippians 3.10. That I may know him. Do we want to know him? Yes that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Romans 8, 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Mm. 1 Peter 4, 13, but rejoice and as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. We have to constantly remind ourselves that right. the, that, that goes with the package. Number one, you're going to be duped. You're going to be jacked. You're going to be stabbed in the back just from being on on this planet, betrayed, lied on, lied to the whole nine yards, played, used, whatever, disrespected, dissed the whole nine yards. That's whether you're saved or unsaved. The difference is through Christ, we have a buffer. He's the buffering agent. So Mm -hmm. when the dart comes and we pull it out, the sting goes with it. Hmm. Whereas when we're unsaved, we have to endure all the hurt all by ourselves. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, you're going to get hurt just because you're on E-A-R-T-H. If things have to be jacked up, I want to be in God's hands. I don't want to be left out on my own because I will make all the wrong choices and I'll make matters 10 times worse. But with the Holy Spirit as our governor, with Jesus Amen. as our buffer and Amen. God as our guide. Amen. Hey, you look I don't d- like it. I don't either. Trust me, you know, I never did like who, it. Who does? But you know what? <clears throat> what you know what I think about honestly when this is what it is. When you look at what was done to Christ, right. how he was spat on, how he was Thorns were in his side. He, mm-hmm. They whipped him with with uh, those uh, whips that that that, that cut blood. the skin open, just like they, they did the slaves. They, they, they pierced him. They gave him vinegar when they put him there, and he was. And you know, through so all that, we probably don't even know. That's probably half of what we know because because that I, I read somewhere where, where it said that Christ's work was it was so wonderful and majestic that. There's not enough books to contain the glory of what he did when he walked the earth. This right. life is nothing but a twinkle of an eye right. compared to eternity. And you have to think about that. Oh, yeah, all this stuff. You're right about being used. All of this stuff that's coming against you is going to be part of your anointing, some of your greatest anointing, when God put you in the driver's seat. When he put you in the driver's seat. I remember years ago. Thank you. I forgot about that. Years ago when I was first learning how to drive. Let's bring it down to a natural. I was learning how to drive. And uh, my father was teaching me. He was an excellent driver, very wise. And he taught, he said, you have the knack to be an excellent driver, a commercial driver. He said, but you have to get rid of the fear of taking these curves. Oh, God, it's coming to me as I'm saying. I didn't realize why I was talking about this. I was just following God's lead. I get it now. Mm-hmm. All right. So in order 
I could drive straight, I could turn and all of that. But when it turned to a curvy part of the road, it was a challenge staying in my lane. So my father takes me up to a mountain, to a, a road where one side is a cliff and the other side are parked cars. My father did that to me. He had me get in the driver's seat and drive a road that was one car wide plus parked cars, plus a cliff. So it was either stay in my lane or we're going over the edge. That's how my father got me past the fear. He made me go through the fear. He made me, he made, he made me be, he challenged my fear with an even more scary situation. Once I came down off that hill, he had me drive up the hill and he had me come down the hill. Once I was done from that hill, I was able to stay in my lane from that day on. Now, there are times when God forces you in areas where he wants to use you the most. And re remember what, what Joseph said to his brothers. What you meant to me for bad, God is using for good. So what mm -hmm. Satan means to us for bad, all those familiar spirits and the constant repetitive attacks. Okay, coming in different costumes, but the same thing nonetheless, with the same results, the same feelings. God uses that negative crap to add more and more anointing to us. Every time we choose to obey, there's more anointing, more anointing, more anointing. There'll come one day where those attacks won't phase you anymore. You'll see it for what it is. It'll be like a fart in the wind. Mm. Woo! Okay, that's over. Let me go on and mind my business. You won't even be able to be tied into it because you're so far above that, that little childish nee nee stuff. But that's how God does it. He takes you higher and higher and higher and higher over hurdle, over hurdle, over hurdle, over cliff edge, over curvy road, over scary situation, over the boogeyman, over all kind of fears and, 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 and insults. He's rising, he's forcing you above like my father forced me to get rid of the fear of, of, of taking a curve on the road. It was either take the curve or fall off and die. Now my father could have been killed right along with me. <laughs> Think about it. Think about that. He put himself in jeopardy, forcing me out of that fear. So there are times when it looks like God is putting us in jeopardy. God is always, it's, it's like there's a target on our head. How long do we have to put up with that crap? God <laughs> says, till that crap doesn't hurt you anymore. Then I got you where I can use you. Mm-hmm. Any of you have calluses on your feet? Mm-mm. Y'all are sweet. Boy, I got calluses. Mm-hmm. And they got thicker and thicker the more I stood and did hair on my feet. Mm. The more I walked, the longer I walked, if I walked three or four miles, whatever. I had calluses on my feet. They were thicker then than they are now. Mm-hmm. It's a form of protection. And the more that thing, that attack comes, the more you build up spiritual callus. Jesus is your callus. He's your buffer. He's the one that stops your foot from hurting. He's the one that stops your feelings from being hurt. But first, you must experience the hurt because part of experiencing the hurt is also him introducing you to you. He's introducing you not only to the good in you, but the weakness in you. He's introducing you to the pride in you. He's introducing you to the intolerance in you. So when other people attack you and it bothers you that badly, the first thing, rather than stop them from hurting me, is, Lord, why do I get so bothered by that? I asked the Lord that one day from a snide remark. 
And the Lord spoke to me and said, rejection. I didn't get it. I said, Lord, what does that have to do with rejection? I didn't get an answer. I got silence. I said, okay, you know, I don't, I don't get it, but I'm tired of rejection controlling my emotional reactions. So would you get the rejection out at the root? Two hours of dry heaving, howling, screaming, and crying. Never had issues with rejection since like that. Never. It, it totally lost its control over how I reacted to disrespect, over how I reacted to people's attitudes. Totally changed. And I said, what a difference when healing and deliverance comes. Same attacks, different reaction. Same words, different feelings. Wow. That's why I'm always on y'all about getting inner healing. That's your callous. You don't shut down. Agree and, about it. Huh? Yeah, that, that's what you keep doing too, Andrea. It takes time. You there keep doing. One day you'll have a breakthrough like I did with that two hour. I would say 15 years. The day I was delivered from the root of rejection. I don't even call it a demon of rejection. I call it a root. Because some emotions go down so deep, they form roots. That's why the Bible says, "Let uh, unless you have uh, the root of bitterness springing up within you, and thereby many be defiled. When you have a root, many around you get defiled by your reactions. And I was done with being controlled by the root of rejection. Once God told me it was the root of rejection, I wanted it out. What does that, what does that mean by it? around you get defiled because of your you have the root of whatever okay okay here's an example here's an example marlene mm -hmm. uh tell me that uh i could have done a better job just tell me i could have done a better job well yeah you could have done a better job well look 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 let me tell you something girlfriend this goes for you, Andrea. This goes for you, Rashad. And this goes for you, Miss Marlene. Screw all y'all. I'm out of here. I'm sick and tired of this crap. I'm sick and tired of Andrea getting on my case. I'm sick and tired of Rashad talking about my weight. I'm sick and tired of all y'all. As far as I'm concerned, all y'all can just go to hell and y'all can drop dead. And blah, 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 blah. Many thereby be defiled. Now you got three people whose feelings are hurt because I can't contain my emotions. <laughs>